Now, you can use Wi-Fi Manager on your mobile phone to change the Wi-Fi credentials, SSID and password on your ESP32 board wirelessly. You don't need to connect ESP32 to your laptop or PC. No more hard coding for the SSID and password. If you have created a project for personal use that connects to your Wi-Fi router or mobile hotspot and later you decide to change the router or hotspot SSID and password, then after changing the Wi-Fi credentials, your ESP32 won't connect anymore. You'll need to physically connect your ESP32 to a laptop and manually update the SSID and password, then re-upload the program. You will have to repeat this time-consuming and tiring process each time you change the SSID and password of an existing Wi-Fi network or want to connect to a new Wi-Fi network. So, if you want to change Wi-Fi credentials on your ESP32 wirelessly in just one minute without any hard coding, then you should use Wi-Fi Manager. It's faster and easier than you might think. The biggest advantage of using Wi-Fi Manager is this. Let's say you have made product that you sell on Amazon or any other online store. Now, if someone buys your product, how will they change the SSID and password? Obviously, you won't give them the code. In this situation, they can use Wi-Fi Manager to change the Wi-Fi credentials on the ESP32 without hard coding. So, if you also want to sell your IoT-based products, make sure to watch this video until the end. You will find many videos on Wi-Fi Manager, but no one has explained how to implement it in a working project, how to save the SSID and password in EEP-ROM and access them later from EEP-ROM, how to use a button at a professional level so the user can securely change their SSID and password anytime using a cell phone or laptop. So, today I'm going to explain and show all of this in a practical way. And let me tell you, even though I'm using the Wi-Fi Manager library, but still I have done 90% of the programming myself to simplify the code. Trust me, when you see the code, you will be amazed at how I made such complex work so simple. So without any further delay, let's get started. You only need one ESP32 board and a button. One leg of the button is connected to 3.3 volt and the other leg is connected to GPIO 13. You can use any other pin as well, but you will need to change the pin number in the programming. I already have a detailed video on the ESP32 and Blink V2.0, so I won't explain how to set up the Blink IoT application on your smartphone. I'm sure 90% of you already know how to use the Blink application to control an LED, and for the 5 person who don't, you can watch that getting started video. I have added a link in the description below. This is the basic code without using the Wi-Fi manager. On the top, we have Blink template ID, Blink template name, and Blink authorization token. Then we have the Blink simple ESP32 library. This is the onboard LED connected to the GPIO5. And these are the Wi-Fi credentials, the SSID and password. And this type of programming, if you want to change the SSID and password, you will have to connect the ESP32 to a laptop each time and then change the SSID and password here. I have already uploaded this program. Using my cell phone, I can control the onboard LD of the ESP32. So this is what we have been doing for years. Now, imagine if this were a product that I was selling, how would the people who buy this product connected to their Wi-Fi network? To change the Wi-Fi credentials in the ESP32 without hard coding, I'm going to use Wi-Fi Manager. As you can see, I have modified the previous code. This time, I have added two more libraries, Wi-Fi Manager and EEP-ROM. You don't need to install EEP-ROM because it gets installed automatically when you set up the ESP32 board, but you will need to install the Wi-Fi Manager library. For this, simply go to the Sketch menu, then to Include Library, and click on the Manage Libraries. Search for the Wi-Fi Manager. Scroll down. You need to install this specific Wi-Fi Manager library. In the same way, you also need to install the Blink library. If you are using a different IoT platform, then there is no need to install the Blink library. This creates a Wi-Fi Manager object to handle Wi-Fi connections. This stores the Blink authentication token, sets up the LED pin number, sets up the button pin number, tracks if the configuration needs saving, these are arrays to store the Wi-Fi, SSID, and password. This function sets, 
should save config to true when the SSID and password are updated, signaling that they should be saved. Save credentials function writes the Wi-Fi SSID and password to EEP ROM so that the ESP32 remember them after a restart. Read credentials function reads the saved SSID and password from EEP ROM when the ESP32 starts, allowing it to connect to Wi-Fi automatically. In the setup function, we initialize serial communication and EEP ROM and set the LD and button pins. If the button is pressed during startup, it starts the Wi-Fi configuration mode, allowing the user to enter new Wi-Fi credentials through a web page. If should save config is true, it saves the new credentials and restarts the ESP32. If the button is not pressed, it reads the saved Wi-Fi credentials from EEP ROM and tries to connect to Wi-Fi and Blink IoT application. Finally, in the loop function, Blink.run keeps the ESP32 connected to the Blink IoT platform, allowing it to send or receive data as needed. You can see how simple and straightforward the code is. You won't find such a simple code anywhere else. Anyway, I have already uploaded this program and now let's watch this in action. I have powered this device for the first time so it's not connected to any Wi-Fi network yet. Make sure the Wi-Fi you want to connect your ESP32 module to is already on. For demonstration, I will use my phone's hotspot. The ESP32 is already powered on and my phone's hotspot is active. Let's check the Wi-Fi list to see if ESP32 config is available. As you can see, there is no Wi-Fi network named ESP32 config in the list. This means the ESP32 is running in normal mode. When it's in normal mode, you can't change the Wi-Fi SSID or password. To switch to configuration mode and change these settings, you need to press this button. You can use a small slide button instead of a big one if you prefer. Anyway, turn on this button. Then press the reset button to restart the ESP32 module. After a few seconds, ESP32 config will appear in the Wi-Fi list. You can see ESP32 config has just appeared in the Wi-Fi list. Next, click on ESP32 config. Then click on configure Wi-Fi. At the top, you can see the available Wi-Fi networks. Select the one you want your ESP32 module to connect to. In my case, I'm going to select my cell. Now I can type in my password, which is LIPO1234. Finally, click on the save button and that's it. The SSID and password are now permanently saved in the ESP32's EAP ROM. You can follow the same exact steps if you want to change the SSID and password again. Now, turn off the button and press the reset button to activate normal execution mode. Now, I can go ahead, open my Blink application and start controlling the onboard LED. Let me tell you, since the SSID and password are stored in the ESP32's EEP ROM, so even if we disconnect or reset the ESP32, the SSID and password will still be saved. Now, let's do it on a laptop. Open the serial monitor. Press the reset button on the ESP32 to check the stored SSID and password. The SSID is my cell and the password is LEPO1234. This time, I'm going to connect ESP32 module to another Wi-Fi network for this. Turn on this button that allows ESP32 module to enter into the configuration mode, then press the reset button to restart the ESP32 module. Go to the Wi-Fi list and you will see ESP32 config. From here, all the other steps are exactly the same. So that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you and next episode and thanks for watching.